So if I move to the clinical setting, my treatment objectives could be very variable because it depends on the objectives of the treatment for every patient. So sometimes if I have a very affected patient, my objective could be to decrease the spontaneous electrical activity or this overreaction in the muscle because, for example, it can help the caregiver for activities of daily living or sometimes it can be a good complement for me because I can use orthotics or any kind of treatment. But if I have a very high functional patient, uh, sometimes the objective could be just decrease m overactive muscles, activity, or um, sometimes uh, to decrease this co-contraction phenomena uh, affecting the movement, or even at the last term to increase uh, to increase uh, functional performance of the muscle. So for me, the, the concept here is a therapeutic window. So we know that the physiological effects of dry needling is restricted to a few days, although some effects can last uh, more time depending on the functional status of the patient. So for me, this could be a tool, uh, uh, the dry needling could be a tool where I can treat the patient and I can use this therapeutic window for a few days to improve retraining of the patient, to allow the patient to do a lot of things with more uh, normal patterns of movement. So I wanted to show you this video. This video tried to show something which is not very clear in musculoskeletal patients, but that is very clear with neuro patients. We know that there is um, abnormal uh, excessive electrical activity in the muscle, so you can see that this muscle has a, a, a very uh, contracted, uh, they are contracting a lot, we can uh, suppose that uh, they have a lot of activity, so what I'm going to do is to, to place them, as you see, in a submaximal stretch position, I'm going to make a, a pincer grip, and what I'm going to do here now is just doing uh, dry kneeling in these nodules, which are fixed by my, my fingers, so what you can have a look in the, in the video is that the muscle, the, in this case the adductor pollicis, is relaxing, so it's opening this uh, thumb. But a very good thing, apart from decreasing the uh, abnormal electrical activity in that point, in the trigger point, is that it has the potential to modulate other muscles because we are realizing that as we are doing gray kneeling, also flexor digitorum muscles are relaxing. So this is a, a, an easy way to, to see some of the things we know from the physiology of trigger points, from the pathophysiology. So in neuro patients, it gives us the opportunity to realize about all, all of these changes. In this case, another thing important is that the patient can stand pain very much so he doesn't feel pain at all when I'm doing this. In some patients, they complain of pain, some others don't complain. So it allowed me to make an aggressive technique here so you can realize how the hand is opening without doing any additional stretching. So we can say there could be some uh, action just there to get all these effects. So the, the video is lasting a bit more, but I'm going to, to move it. You have all these videos in the website so you can download any videos. So another video I would like to show you is uh, a video to try to uh, show this increase in the, in the power of the muscle. So this is a video that was made by a colleague of mine. He was my student at that time and it was a, a really good uh, work, although I, there are some methodological issues regarding measurements and recording that I don't like, but um, the, the, the main point for me is that this patient has a, a, a big weakness to make the, the grip of objects. So. In this case, uh, he uh, did some testing for different muscles. Uh, he applied dry kneeling for different muscles. I always criticize not wearing gloves. I, I think here is something you respect a lot, especially if you are recording. But um, <laughs> as I say, if you are going to be in the TV, put your gloves at least. Okay. <laughs> because this is for forever and for the whole world. So in Spain we use gloves, okay, but... In this case, uh, this is just a, a summary of the interventions, but the most 
remarkable thing here is that we were treating biceps, so the rich movement didn't improve a lot. But the most important thing here is that when we treated the adductor policies, there, there was a, a very uh, big increase in the, uh, in the power of the muscle. And another thing very important, if you want to have a look in detail, is that all these things that the study says that the muscle is fatiguing a lot when they have trigger points, we can have a look here. And after, in this case, three sessions of treatment, I can grab objects very, mu uh, very much better, but if you realize with detail, as he is doing this, he is experiencing more difficulties, he is fatiguing much more, so this is another good point to, to understand trigger points and how they are affecting the patient's function. Because here, for example, this is not the same performance the first time than this one, or perhaps trying to have some other. So this is some way a way to look how it's uh, changing. So, uh, if we move to function, which is uh, something very important for us, uh, I, I have brought here an example of the... an example of a patient that attended a course in Mexico. I would like to, to put this video because it, uh, drain needling can be also useful for children, although uh, we should change uh, some protocols to diminish pain because sometimes if it's painful, children is not going to, to stand the treatment. So uh, in this case, uh, we did the treatment. Uh, as you can see in the video, this is a pre-post treatment. And uh, perhaps uh, you can see some changes in the function, although we should consider that when we make a pre-post evaluation, the patient can be sensitized depending on the muscle. So sometimes some muscle like soleus and gastronomius could be sensitized. Another uh, example, I think that when we say that in Spain that an image is better than a, a thousand words, so uh, a video is a lot of images, so I think it will be more useful then. So this is also a course. He's we, didn't ha uh, we only had uh, antiseptic bottles, so more or less we, 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 deal, we did and we said, okay, we are going to try to evaluate how the patient is taking the object, transporting the, the object. So in my mind, the important thing here is that you have a look to the whole pattern of movement. We can see some restrictions, some collapse in flexor digitorum of the muscles. And uh, apart from the quantity of movement, there is a problem to reach, there is a problem to separate, there is a problem to, to, to extend uh, the wrist joint. There is a good point, which is the quality of movement. Sometimes if you realize here, when the patient wants to release the bottle, he, she has really problems to release, so he has a lot of activity. So, these are some of the things very important for me as a physio because the quantity is important but the quality is much more important and the problem is that in research sometimes the quality of movement is very difficult to measure but if we as the patients we can realize that um, sometimes they feel changes in quality of movement, they feel more fluent uh, with the movement. Okay? So in this case you can see how some muscles change but also how the whole pattern of movement is changing and in this patient the good point is that the effects are going to last much more because the functional the functionality of this patient is is, is higher so here you can see how she extends the wrist joint he releases very well he has not so much compensations in the in the shoulder joint so I think that uh, you can appreciate some changes, not only local, but also general changes in the pattern of movement. So as Josh Cleanan was saying yesterday, uh, and people say, oh, how is it working? I don't know how is it working. I only now I treat trigger points, and I think that trigger points do the rest of the, the job, but I, I can say, uh, how does it work? 
The, the question here is that we are also developing some studies in the research group to try to find what's happening after we do dry kneeling for neuropatients, but I'm afraid uh, it is going to take a long time for us to do it. Okay, so more or less you can have a, a general overview of this.